Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. Uh, UFC 304. There was a, a, a flyweight matchup between Mohamed Makaev, someone that you know, yeah. and uh, Manel Kopp. Actually, you might know him as well. He was out here for a couple of years okay. working over at AKA Thailand. Ah, okay. That's when he was fighting in Rising. Mohammed's been coming out here. Yeah, for a long I remember time. him from like my Tiger days. And exactly, stuff too, right? right? Remember uh, he was, remember he was out there when he was an amateur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember meeting him for the first time there. So like we know the level of skill these guys have because mm-hmm. they were good back then. Oh yeah. And this was years ago. Absolutely. And uh, and Mohammed was a guy that everybody was talking about for a long time, right? He's the next one. Mm-hmm. He's the one. Once he turns pro, he's gonna do his thing and. He's yeah. proven that he's good, right? Right. He's undefeated. only 23 years old, man. Which is crazy. Like, Thir- 12, 13, and 0, something like that, undefeated. Yeah, 7 and 0 in the UFC after mm-hmm. this win. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to talk about some of the stuff that went down in the fight, right? So the first thing is uh, the <laughs> he pulled his pants <laughs> completely off, pretty much. Like his ass was sticking out. Uh-huh. You know, uh, Manel Cop's ass was sticking <laughs> out. And. Uh, you know, it's a tactic that people use, right? Grabbing the shorts. Like, in the mm-hmm. rules, you can grab your own shorts. Right. Uh, obviously, you can't grab your opponent's yeah. shorts, right? Mm-hmm. And when he took them down, um, before we talk about that, I want to talk about how much Manel Cop's wrestling defense has improved. Mm. Because when he was fighting for Ryzen, he was getting taken down by, like, Japanese strikers. Right. And it was, like, very odd, right? But yeah. But now... Against someone like Mohammed, who's very yeah, good, solid wrestling, solid wrestling pedigree, yeah, and been do- and he's been doing MMA wrestling forever, right? Yeah. So, to be able to like defend against that, and uh, he was very impressive, I thought, right? Yeah. And he had a broken toe, oh, in the fight. Did you notice that from I, the first round? Damn. Okay. He broke his. Toe. Remember that one point where he was like sitting there and he stopped fighting and he was like stomping his foot because his toe was dislocated or broken. Oh man. And uh, dude. It, it shows you how impressive Makaev is, or not Makaev, uh, uh, yeah, man, cop, yeah. by fighting all three rounds with that and being competitive, that's, right? Yeah, that's gritty. So, like, pulling the pants down, what are your thoughts on that? Did you see that foul? Uh, I missed it. It was, like, in the background. I was working at the same time, too. But, um, yeah, like, sometimes it's, it's, it's not, like, an unheard of thing where it's, like, if you have a hard enough time trying to keep somebody down or take somebody down there there are certain like aspects of gamesmanship that you kind of go in um especially if it's you know if you if you see it that it's blatantly intentional like it happens all the time even even at the super like high level stuff where it's like all these tiny little well in this case of like pulling the shorts that was clearly visible but um but in a lot of cases, there's all these tiny little adjustments that are just like blatantly illegal, but it's really, really difficult for the referee to catch. So like putting your fingers in somebody's gloves in like certain positions mm-hmm. where it's just impossible for the referee to see it. Um, so like it, it does happen. And it's, you know, we, we kind of have this impression as competitors sometimes where it's if the referee doesn't see it, then... It's legal in in some sense, which is good and bad. So like, you know, it's there's really no way to reinforce it further in a lot of these cases. Like the referee can only keep track of so many things, including your own safety, right? So like, uh, the ref's got enough on his plate already. So it's it's a tough situation, you know. In in a perfect environment, you don't want those um, sort of underhanded tactics, so to speak. But it's it's kind of similar to the, like, I kind of see it as, like, one of those thi- inevitable things like weight cutting. It's like, we, we know it's not the best thing to do, but it exists, and we just kind of have to deal with it. So that's kind of where, um, where I kind of stand on that one, yeah. Well, in MMA, um, like, the point deduction thing, mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's not very common, right? right? Like, right. fence grabs blatant fence grabs on takedowns yeah like they're just giving them warnings or like the ref is slapping their hand so they don't grab it more right like they should be taking a point instantly yeah like if it's blatant like their hands are gripped and someone's trying to take them down right even if they're not taking them down if their hand is just inside the fence like grabbing it like that right because you know offensive defensively it doesn't matter right right yeah because warnings don't um 
No, you get a warning in the back. Right. Oh, that's the referee comes and talks to you and tells you like, you know, I'm gonna be the ref. Oh, that's right. Yeah, before the fight. Yeah, before the <laughs> fight, and then they give you a little like spiel on like what's what's up, right? Yeah, and then they do it anyway. Yeah, they yeah. do it anyways, right? Because it's the, if the referees, like obviously it's cheating, right? Mm-hmm. Maka have cheated, yeah. right? Um, but there's so many other fighters, right? You can't just pinpoint him and say like, oh, he's the only one because he's right. not. Yeah. If if you watch the whole event, there's many people that cheated like there was a bunch of fence grabs yeah there's a lot of those instances yeah even on this event like it was like they there was a couple of fights where the person uh, i think it was one of the girls like grabbed the fence twice Ooh. and it still didn't take a point away you uh, know they're just like stop grabbing the fence it was like a warning how many warnings can you give somebody right until, right like, like the point deduction comes in and that's why the cheating is happening mm. that's why people are grabbing the fence that's why people are grabbing the shorts right you know yeah. and, and sometimes the ref sees it sometimes they don't right right and that's the reason why they should take a point because there's some moments where refs are not able to see things right yeah. but when they do and if it's cheating mm-hmm. they should take a point yeah because it could have the result of the action that comes from cheating could have a direct outcome or a direct influence on the outcome of the fight. So therefore, the the point deduction because of that attempt to like basically get that advantage should be penalized in some shape or form. Like it, it's yeah. It affected the decision, right? Like yeah. if the point was taken, right, then, it would have affected the outcome. Yeah, of the it fight. would have completely affected the outcome of the fight because mm-hmm. Vakayev didn't dominate for three rounds, right? right yeah. Um, it was a competitive fight. Manel Cop. You know, arguably won two of the rounds, even with a broken toe. Imagine like he, yeah. how he would have performed without a broken toe. Yeah, yeah. this guy's a savage. Yeah, close enough fight as it is, and he wasn't you know firing on all cylinders because yeah. of his toe. Yeah, yeah. it's just it, it was ridiculous. Like, you know, obviously Makaev has to take responsibility, but mm-hmm. the refs, man, like these guys are not taking. Dude, he was yelling at him. That was his warning, like, mm. don't make me do that. And he didn't take it a point away, dude. It's just oh, yeah. obviously obvious, have. right? Mm-hmm. That he needs to, that point needed to be taken away. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of those instances where I think referee intervention should have taken place more. Um, yeah. It could have been more involved there. Like, yeah. sometimes you want the refs to, like, stay out of it, but that's one of those instances where jump in there, like, make it right, you know? Yeah. It doesn't, I don't know. It's, it, it brings up the, you know, the it brings up uh, like, um, is there something going on, mm. right? Like behind, like we don't know about about like, is there people saying that the ref shouldn't take points away that mm. we don't know about? Like, is the commission telling referees like, oh. don't take points away unless it's extremely necessary? Mm. You know what? That does happen in like other sporting events too like the super subjective calls it's like look there's there's a lot of money riding on this one mm. like not not saying the UFC refs are taking bribes um, but like in, in other sporting events it's like you know they, they kind of want to sway in the direction of a certain winner so they're like okay we'll let these subjective questionable calls go to the other person and like if that's the case that's terrible because you know, yeah you yeah. see it like in like uh, major sports like they say like certain athletes right. are getting uh, preferential treatment yeah. by the referees like you know with fouls you know, like, especially in basketball like yeah. oh if you're Kobe Bryant if you're LeBron James right. and they want whatever team that he's playing for to right. go to the next stage of the playoffs yeah. then the referees might call more fouls you know what I mean right. it's like NBA players have complained about that. Yeah, and officiating gets super corrupt at that level. Like you'll you'll see it at the well, it, the Olympics just started, right? So like you'll you'll see it in a lot of those sports where some like some referees like get bribed into okay, we're gonna favor this guy and like we're gonna try our hardest to get him to win. Especially, you know, like we'll say, I know there was. I think with boxing, uh, either one or two Olympics ago, you really saw that. I saw it in wrestling too. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if it showed up in other sports, but like, yeah, it's, it's like there's, there are sometimes outside influences mm. that clearly favor one person over the other, and, like, and you know sometimes that incentivizes the ref a little bit to either do one thing or not do anything at all in some cases. So it's, it is a really frustrating. Uh, part of the sport as a competitor they need to take points away Mm -hmm. they need to take points away like you cannot cheat 
like cheating has becoming so much more common in the last couple of years mm -hmm. because you know fighters know <laughs> that yeah. they're not gonna call it so they, yeah. they they're almost getting like a extra you know right. like an extra uh you know just extra like here you know right you, it's you, like i'll do this until the referee warns me and then maybe i'll yes. back off a little bit but then if you know if the referee doesn't like do anything about it, it's like well i just got away with that five mm -hmm. six seven eight times right and so like okay well that saved me from giving up this position or whatever or that allowed me to get out of a shitty position yeah. in some cases yeah, yeah so it's yeah it's a uh, man it's like yeah it really shouldn't happen um but fuck it's it's a tough thing to work through and you know, this fight man there's been a bunch of like controversy around it right yeah. there was the pants grab mm -hmm. yeah there were a lot of yeah. infractions in, yeah. in that fight also um, uh, Manel Cop had like uh, Mohammed in a guillotine oh that's right it was yeah. tight mm -hmm. and Mohammed is saying or Cop was saying that he tapped and if you watch the replay, it looks, he does like mm. it does look like he did something right, right. similar to a tap. Yeah, right? yeah. But we've seen that many times as well. Like guys, like kind of just like yeah, just doing like, this. It's like oh, I'm shifting my hands, right? Yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. just trying to get the other person to think that they tapped. And yeah, it's yeah, I totally, I really hate it when people do that because it's like look, like I'm just looking out for your safety that I let go of this submission hold, and it's like. You're abusing that. Mm. You're abusing me looking out for you, or like this unspoken rule about like, look, you respect the tap because it's for both our safety. Um, it's manipulation of the, yeah. the rules. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Like, um, even grabbing the shorts, fence grabs, manipulation of the rules, mm -hmm. um, like a fake tap to yeah. let to have your opponent loosen the submission up a little bit. Right. Because even like a half an inch looser. Yeah. It's a huge difference. Right. Especially it might, you're choking somebody. Yeah, it's the difference between whether you can breathe or not in some cases, or like if the blood's still flowing yeah. between your head and your body, right? So, like, big advantage. Yeah, it's just uh, that was another controversy out of that fight. And, and you know, Cop is obviously frustrated with, with what happened, the yeah. result of the fight. Rightfully so. Yeah, yeah, rightfully so, man. He should mm -hmm. be pissed. And, uh, you know. It was it was it was just a weird fight, man. Like before they were gonna fight, they were like chasing after each other in the oh, ring. Yeah, the events yeah. and stuff too. Yeah. And no, even like oh, in the, when the they're ring. introducing see, before they even introduced them as fighters right. in the cage, they had like all this security. Uh -huh. And then they were like race running at each other, and the security separated them. And then once all this the, drama, and then it's a snooze fest of a yeah, fight. Yeah, the basically. first round they're just like standing around, you know. But cop is more of like a you know a counter fighter as mm -hmm. well. Right. And, uh, and you know. Makaev is definitely a wrestling threat, so you don't want to just jump in and start throwing combinations. Right, right. He might dip under and uh, yeah, and put you on your back. Right, right? So, yeah. For tactical reasons, the caution was like, yeah. like from that standpoint, understandable. It does make for a boring fight, but like I do understand the caution in like, okay, I gotta be real careful, kind of thing. All right, so, so the result, Makaev wins the fight. Right, you cannot change that. Mm -hmm. Like, when's the last time they changed the result? Yeah, I don't remember the last time never. they overturned the results never, of the fight. Never. Yeah. Unless it's like a drug, like, oh, test. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like failure or something like that, or you know maybe there was some kind of like shenanigans behind the scenes, mm -hmm. but rarely ever that they change any results, right? Which is very shitty mm -hmm. for the fighters. Yeah. You know, um, but um, but coming out of this, you know, like, Muhammad after the. Uh, the fight, he was saying that they don't want him to wrestle. Mm. Like, that's what the UFC was telling him, that they don't want him to wrestle. Right. And he's a wrestler. Yeah, that's a weird... Like, I'm not sure how much I buy that. You know what I mean? Maybe it's just Well, they, they released or... him from his contract. Yeah. This was his last fight on his contract, and... Uh, right. And they released him from... But, you know, and everybody was like, you have a 23-year-old prospect that's 7-0 and and has beaten top 15 fighters multiple top 15 fighters mm -hmm. and he's still getting better so there people are confused like why would you want to release him yeah because i can think of at least a handful of fighters that basically use that same style mm -hmm. to win fights even in the ufc itself and so it's like i i get the feeling it's got more to do with the other stuff and that's kind of like okay like at least at least we can cite some kind of reason but it's yeah 
Well, I've I've had a uh, you know you've had interactions with Mohammed, right? Yeah. And Mohammed is he's a Dagestani, right? Like they mm-hmm. they all have kind of like a similar personality. Yeah. Right, and he but he's always been like cordial. Yeah, I've never had issues with him. Yeah, ever. like right. Like I've always he's a lot of times he's very nice to a lot of the people, 100%, right? His, yeah. Especially his training partners, right? Yeah. People that he's. He just comes to train with. He probably not even know them, but he's you know he's nice to them. Mm-hmm. Um, so like my interactions with him throughout the years, being around him, yeah, um, I've never seen him have any problems with anybody. Yeah, right I've now, never right? had a negative interaction with Muhammad. Yeah, and uh, so like I've gotten messages, and I've heard online that you know he's uh, he's hard to deal with. Mm. He's a uh, you know he's an asshole to the staff, and I'm, that very it surprises that surprising. me that he's an asshole to the staff. I was just like, really? Right. Because I've never seen him act like that before. Because yeah. you know we've been around like Chechni and the Dagestanis, yeah. and there's some of them are very like yeah they're 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 their way, and that's yeah. it, right? Mm-hmm. And Mohammed's a little bit more cultured, right? Because he lives in he's lived in the UK, yeah. and he understands like the differences. So mm-hmm. it kind of shocked me a little bit hearing these things, right? Um, you know, and Dana White, you know, he's he he was asked about Muhammad, and he's like, oh, you know, the PFL is gonna get a really good undefeated fighter. Right. right. Now, some new information has come out uh-huh. is that Muhammad and his manager were talking with the PFL before his contract was up. Ah. And trying okay. to use, you know, this is the rumor, use the money. Or the amount that the PFL was gonna right here's the offer. Yeah, Do you want to match him. it or like double yeah. it or whatever? But you right? can't say that to the UFC because why are you talking to them before? So right. But they got wind of it. They got mm. they got word of it. So must somebody in the PFL must have told the UFC. Ah, I the UFC, see. I see. Right, and uh, and that's why they didn't re-sign him. Okay. And they're not going to re-sign him. Mm. Is because he was trying to play. You know? Oh yeah, and it's illegal to do that because you're under contract. Yeah, as yeah. an athlete, you're under contract with the UFC until a certain point, which is this fight, right? Right. Once right. this fight's over, yeah. If you're a free agent, yeah, yeah you're you a can... free agent. You go talk to whoever you want, but right. you cannot go around and talk with people because mm. it's just you, know, you signed a contract. Right. I'm surprised the UFC uh, is not suing them because mm. that could be a possibility as well, right? Ah, right, right. True. Like they could sue him and say, hey, because if you look at other major sports, right, it's a big deal if a player or a manager of a player, agent of a player, goes and talks to another team. Right. True. Because you could use it as leverage, right? Yeah. And because uh, cause you're, you're, you have some information that the UFC doesn't have. Mm-hmm. And then when you're in no- contract negotiations, you already know that the PFL is going to pay this much. So you say, okay, I want this much. Oh. Okay. And then if the UFC doesn't want it, you'd be like, oh, it's all good. We're going to go mm, test right. free agency. And you already know what the PFL is going to give you. But that's not fair. Mm. You know what I mean? For the parties involved. Right, right. And I think that's why the UFC was like, we don't care. Uh, Get rid of them. Right. Yeah, it was like, yeah, instead of pursuing, like going down the rabbit hole of pursuing this as like a breach of contract Mm. or something, it sounds like, okay, this isn't worth the trouble. (laughs) It's a... (laughs) Which is odd it's a major bluff, man, by his management team. If this is all true, right, right, is it's a major bluff by them, man. Like having that information being released as well. Yeah. And maybe it's not. Maybe it's not even true, and someone just doesn't like <laughs> Mohammed Makhayev. And, yeah. And they were in the year of the UFC. Yeah, because this is a big, like, career-changing, life-changing oh, decision. Huge. Like, especially all, when you're a flyweight. All the money implications, like all. It's like all the visibility and platform implications, right? Like it's yeah, it's wild. They say they're saying like that he was a boring fighter. He's seven and zero. I think he has like three or four finishes in the UFC. How are you a boring fighter? Right. If you're seven and zero and you have three or four finishes, yeah. Like you're not a decisionator. Right. And also, he's been in trouble in a lot of these fights too. Like yeah, he's like been the, risky. Some of the ones he won by decision, he's like, was that that knee bar? Was yeah, hyper extended that thing. Yeah. Right. No, he finished that fight. He came back and finished the guy. Oh, that was a finish. In the third round, I believe. Damn. That's um, crazy. But maybe I'm wrong. But, yeah, I remember that fight, though. Yeah, yeah you're right. Uh, yeah, it's very odd, man. And, and it's... it's Because if Mohammed moves to another promotion, like, what other promotion has flyweight men? Mm. None. True. Yeah. None. Bellator doesn't have it. Right. PFL doesn't have it. Oh. Right. So Mohammed would have to move up to Bantamweight, which is probably good for him. To be honest, probably yeah, because he probably cuts a lot. Yeah, um, and He's then he'd go, dude. yeah, and he and he could go fight in uh, PFL, and PFL is Bellator, right? So same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I see why they wanted to kind of leverage it, but 
rules are rules, right? Mm-hmm. But then he's over there in the cage breaking all the rules. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it must be there's something that happens. Right, you know? yeah. It, it feels like there's a lot of bridges being burned here, like yeah. from, from both parties kind of thing. So it's... <laughs> and it seems like, you know, Muhammad's manager also manages like a bunch of UFC fighters. Uh, okay. A bunch, like Leon Edwards. I see. Um, uh, Tai Tuovasa, uh, Max Holloway. Like, those guys are big names in the in the in the fight game, right? Ah, okay. And his manager is the same guy. Got it. And he also manages Casey as well. That's right. Same manager. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't think that they would f- fumble that bad. Right. They yeah they wouldn't play the weasel game so to speak no. and just go underhand yeah undermine. No. Uh, there's certain I think there's certain managers in the game and it's very obvious that. They are under the thumb of the UFC, mm. so they kind of do what the UFC does, and they get a little bit of privilege, right? Right, right. And then there's certain managers that fight for their fighters yeah. and get as much money as they can, right? Absolutely. And do what they need to do. Mm-hmm. So when you're fighting against a machine, you cannot make mistakes, mm. you know? And if you do, you cannot know, let them know that right. you made a mistake, right? Yeah. If you do, if they find out then they're going to use it against you. Yeah. They got the leverage. They absolutely got the and, leverage. And uh, it looks like uh, Mohammed is already cut. Like, mm-hmm. he's already cut. No, he's not cut. He's he's His contract goes, like, uh, timed out, right? Mm. His contract ended. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, and they got the email. I guess the people that do the rankings, they got the email saying that you, you're you not going to vote on Mohammed Makhev because he's not on the roster anymore. Mm, okay. Um, so that kind of tells you. Because he was a top 15 fighter. He just beat the, I think... Uh, cop is number four or five or something like that. Damn. So that's a big major win, you know. Right. It wasn't the most spectacular performance, but it's still a win. Yeah. At the end of the day, they just want they. You just need to have the win. Right. And then your winning streak goes to a certain point, right? Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of speculation like, oh, he used hard to deal with, and um, you know, the the his management talked to the PFL, and maybe all of it's true. And if all of it's true, then the UFC was justified for not re-signing him, mm-hmm. right? And especially with the fight and how it played out. Right. And then also, like, the, the fighting before the fight. Like, there was one fight at the PI where Manel attacked, or Manel got in a fight with uh, Makaev and elbowed him and cut him in his forehead. Christ. And there was a picture of it as well, ah, of the cut. I and see. then uh, during fight week, uh, Mohammed went up to Manel and said, "Hey, let's take a picture." And then he sucker punched him. Jeez. And then there was a huge brawl between his teams. Yeah, I know the UFC is not big on like the negative, nah, like extra curriculum. They don't care, right? They use it for promotion. They might say that they don't like it. The Conor McGregor thing, where he threw the dolly on the at the bus and shattered the bus, and like, huh. like they use that as promotion. Damn. So like, even if like a fighter gets hurt enough to not actually show up, you think? Well, then that's, yeah, that's an issue, but right. like, they're using it as promotion because, like, people are saying, oh, his behavior of, like, f- like sucker punch and cut. No, John Jones attacked DC on the stage. Mm. They didn't cut him for that. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, fair. There's fair. been a bunch of, like, situations. Right. Leon Edwards, Hori Masvidal. Ah, oh, true, I forgot you remember that, that one. Yeah, that He w- pieced them up, the two two piece in the soda, right? Yeah, I forgot about that one. That was a while. They didn't get, he didn't get cut. He actually became a bigger star. <laughs> Damn. Okay. So. So probably some like favoritism at work too. Some I bias. don't know, man. I hope. Uh, I hope they figure it out, right? Mm. But if if the UFC doesn't sign him, re-sign him, then he's gonna have to go to bantamweight, and of co- obviously, you know, PFL, Bellator, they they'll probably end up getting him, right? Cause he he's the type of guy that can come in and uh, and he's only twenty three and develop yeah. into just a right. Just he's a got time. Force. Yeah. He'll make yeah. a splash. 